Hello, in this presentation I will talk about a well-known algorithm for calculating optimal routes with topological maps and grid maps for robot motion planning. The aims of this presentation are, on the one hand, to understand the use of graphs to solve optimal route problems. In this sense, we will see the A-star algorithm, which is one of the widely used algorithms for this purpose. I will also explain briefly some key aspects of the extra algorithm in order to be able to differentiate its main characteristics compared with AE star. To finish, I will show step by step an example solved with the AE star algorithm. I will begin by explaining what a topo topological map is. It is a graph with nodes joining a star configuration with a goal configuration. Define it in the collision-free configuration space, also known as Q3. In order to navigate on a topological map, the robot must calculate an optimal route that allows it to reach its goal configuration. Routes joining two nodes represent the set of configurations that the robot must follow to move from one node to another and must be also in the collision-free collision -free configuration space but this is out of the scope of this presentation. In addition to this, routes usually have an associated cost uh, to move from one node to another one. Sometimes the start uh, and goal are not part of the map, so they must be connected somehow to the graph to solve the optimal route problem. For instance, finding the route that connects the closest uh, graph configuration. Algorithms for calculating optimal routes have their origins in dynamic programming. The theoretical framework of dynamic programming techniques was established by Bellman in the 1960s, allowing to compute optimal policies with applications on a wide variety of fields such as optimal control, approximate dynamic programming, brainstormer learning, graph theory, operational research, among others. One of the classic algorithms for calculating routes on graphs is the extra algorithm, named after the surname of its creator. The algorithm performs a, an uninformed search that generally is slower than other algorithms such as a star algorithm, but the calculations can be used for multiple queries because it does not depend on the goal configuration. It uses a priority queue to determine which nodes should be visited first and keeps a list of visited nodes. The way to set the priority in the queue use what is known as operative cost, which is the minimum cost from of one node uh, or to reach uh, to that node from the star configuration. On the other hand, Easter algorithm performs an informed search which means that its resolution is guided by the knowledge of the goal configuration to be reached. It uses an intelligent and an efficient search algorithm by maintaining two lists with nodes, the open and the closed lists. At each iteration, a node is selected from the open list, minimizing the valuation cost. The function f on the formula below, consisting on an operative cost and a heuristic cost. The selected node is moved from the open list to the closed list. In addition to this, new nodes are added to the open list with the successors uh, of the nodes uh, in the closed list, and also some operative cost uh, might be updated too. Indeed, the operative cost represents, as before, the minimum cost to reach the node uh, from the static configuration, exactly as before. But here, the A star algorithm includes a mm, heuristic cost, which is an overestimate of the cost for a given node to reach the goal configuration, usually using some kind of distance criteria. Therefore, one of the main differences with respect to the distra algorithm is precisely this, that the evaluation function includes an heuristic cost, which implies a previous knowledge of the goal node you want to reach and the search is directed towards it. Now let's see an example on how to solve an optimal root problem with the A-star algorithm. We start from node A and we want to reach node N. 
and we want to find the route with the lowest possible cost. We create two lists, as I have previously mentioned, one closed and the open one. In the closed list, we add node A with imperative cost zero because the cost to reach A from A is zero. In addition to this, I have also provided a realistic cost by doing a rough estimate based on the graph structure. In this case, I have set a unitary cost for each displacement from left to right, and I have added an extra unitary cost to note on the top and the bottom rows. The computation of these heuristic costs are usually based on some distance criteria, such as Euclidean distance. Also, the cost between the nodes must be known in advance, the numbers you can see in between the links. The next step is to compute the nodes to be added to the open list, which are the successor's nodes on the closed, of the closed list. That is, the nodes that can be reached from the nodes uh, belonging to the closed list. In this case, nodes B, C and D. The operative cost of these nodes are 3, 5 and 2 units, respectively, which is computed from the operative cost of the predecessor, predecessor node, in this case A, and the cost between the nodes. Furthermore, if we add the heuristic cost to these costs, then we have the, the uh, node D is has a cost of 7 units, which is the lowest one. Therefore, that will be the selected node. Here, the blue color represents the nodes that I have that I have just entered uh, uh, into the open list for the first time, and this is simply used for a better understanding of the algorithm. The next step, nodes F and G are added to the open list, while node D has been moved from uh, to, the, to the closed list uh, from the open list, with an operative cost of two units, as mentioned before. Therefore, once D is in the closed list, C operative cost can be updated, because previously the cost was five units, due to the fact that the only way to reach C was from A. But now we can reach C through D, having an operative cost of four units, which also reduces the valuation cost. So, Updated nodes are highlighted in orange, as you can see. In the current state, the node with the lowest evaluation cost is F, which will enter into the closed list in the next iteration. Now, nodes E, H, I, and J are added as new nodes and causing the operative cost to, uh, of the node G to be updated as well, as you can see. In the current situation, we have a tie. In that case, we can select any of the nodes with the lowest cost to enter into the closed list. I have selected node I, which causes that nodes K, L, and M to be added to the list, with nodes H and M being now the nodes with the lowest cost, as you can see. So now I have selected node H, which causes the node L to be updated, and now L and M are the nodes with the lowest cost again, with a tie. So let's say I select node M. So now node N is added to the open list, which clearly it's an indication that somehow we are close to the solution. But as you can see, we still have to add node L to the closed list because right now is the node with the lowest cost. So, in this last iteration, the new uh, node uh, to add to the closed list is the node N. And then in that case, the algorithm finishes with a root cost of 7 units. Once the closed list of nodes uh, is obtained, we must obtain the optimal root. This is done backwards, going through the predecessor's relationship that has existed between the nodes. If we have taken this aspect into account during the computation of the algorithm, the optimal route is as simple as following the path upwards. A classic approach to solving motion planning problems is to use a grid map. In this case, each cell represents a node or configuration that the robot can reach 
and it will be occupied cells and uh, there will be occupied cells and non-occupied cells. For the two-dimensional case, we have a four connectivity or eight connectivity as shown. For the distance calculation between cells, it is common to consider that the displacement from one cell to another has a unitary cost, if it's a vertical or horizontal displacement. While if it's diagonal, the cost is the square root of 2. If the cell is occupied with an obstacle, then we can use an infinitive cost, so uh, that the root calculation algorithm never visits that cell. The, the implementation of the A-star algorithm with grid maps can therefore be seen as a graph with connected cells. This implementation is based on the MATLAB library implemented by Paul Prima Kumer and uses a grid map to determine the cells that are considered obstacles, the start and the goal cells as well. As you can see, the algorithm finds the optimal route based on the cell cost explained on the previous slide. In this presentation, a well-known algorithm for computing optimal routes commonly used in motion planning techniques has been introduced. Thank you very much.